Welcome back to Life of Birch and welcome to yet another rainy, dreary, 30 something degree winter day here in Maryland. Between the weather and being sick, I haven't been on any of the bikes in over two weeks, but that's all right because downtime just means that we finally have time to dial in the new Moto Vlog setup for 2023. I may or may not have bought out a bit too hard on Black Friday, upgrading my helmet setup as well as my handheld vlog setup that I'm using right now. And it's finally time to set that up and I get lots of questions about what I use and what the best Moto Vlog setup is. So I figured I'd walk you guys through it as I go. All right, so we'll start off talking about the helmet setup, then we'll move on to the handheld setup, the wireless mic setup, everything that you need to know to get started with moto vlogging. First things first, let's take a look at my current setup. So my current setup is a Bell Raystar DLX helmet. It might not seem like the helmet makes a difference, but trust me, it does. Depending on the helmet that you use, it'll obviously affect the acoustics inside of the helmet as well as wind noise, etc. But the main thing that you got to worry about is just making sure that whatever helmet you use has a chin curtain down here to block out as much wind coming in the helmet as possible. Now, as far as actual setup goes, I have a GoPro Hero 8 mounted to a chin mount from, wait for it, chinmounts.com. Super original name, I know. But chinmounts.com has the best chin mounts by far. They make them for all kinds of different helmets and they're molded exactly to the shape of your helmet. They're only like 35 bucks. Definitely the way to go. And then I have a couple adapters coming off of it to get the camera where I want it to be. And then out of the Hero 8, we have the GoPro microphone adapter, which you need to use a microphone unless you go with a media mod, which I'll talk about in a second. And then coming out of the microphone adapter, I have the mic cable coming down here. And then I have have all the wires bunched up and stuffed right there under the little neck curtain and that's just kind of like all of the extra wire that I needed to get out of the way and then I have the actual microphone wire running through here and then I have the microphone popping out right there out of the cheek pad right by my mouth and just a little while ago I switched this mic out because I found this one to be better than what I had been using and this is the giant squid microphone that a bunch of moto vloggers are using this is the mic that I used for years and I got tons of compliments on it because it's super super clear this is the Sony ECM CS3 microphone. Now, like I said, I got tons of compliments on it because the audio is so crisp and clear, which you can hear right here. How do you like that thing? I just got it. But the downside is that because it was so crisp and clear, this microphone is very, very sensitive. So anytime that there was a lot of noise or anything like that hitting the microphone, it got overwhelmed and started peaking and popping. Have a good one. And that would happen really anytime that I went over like 45 or 50 miles per hour, I had to be really careful and almost like plan on talking a bit quieter than I normally would just so that I didn't overwhelm the microphone. And that was fine and dandy, but I kind of got sick of, you know, when I had to do like a zero to 60 run video or a top speed video, I couldn't because the audio audio would start peaking and popping. So eventually I decided, you know what? The audio sounds great, but I need a trade-off. I love how crisp and clear it is, but I can't have it peaking and popping like that. And that's how I found the giant squid mic. And you can hear right here that it is a bit more muffled, not quite as crisp and clear as the Sony ECM CS3. Maybe this is where it's starting to make more sense to have an adventure bike. But I think it's pretty clear here that the peaking and popping does not exist nearly as badly as with the Sony. So for me, that slight downgrade in audio quality was well worth it to have a microphone that doesn't peak and pop and I can talk as loud as I need to at any speed that I need to. So again, that is the giant squid microphone. I love it. Now, the next thing that I wanna to touch on is the battery door right here for the GoPro Hero 8. So the stock door for the GoPro Hero 8 does not have a hole right here for the mic adapter to plug in. So you have to get one of these. The one that I got is made by, I think the company is Alonzi. And as you can see, it has a hole here. So the battery door still holds the battery in, but it has an open Opening, so you can just plug the mic adapter in right there. Now the other route that you can go instead of using a mic adapter and this door is using the media mod which you can see right here on my other GoPro Hero 8 and you can see that right there it has an opening where you can just plug the mic straight into it but there's a couple of downsides to using the media mod which made me steer clear of it. The first one is just the overall size of it. This isn't actually part of it you don't need that but you can just see it makes the GoPro so much bigger I don't want something that big and bulky on the front of my helmet so that was reason one and then the second reason is because right now if I'm out moto vlogging and my battery dies I can just pop that out open the battery door and swap out the battery but if I have the media mod I have to go ahead and unscrew it entirely from the mount take it off the mount fold the legs up oh open the side door pull it out put a new battery in 
put it back in the media mod, close it, fold the feet back down, reattach it, and then try and make sure that it's pointed in the same direction as it was before. And that is just way too much work, especially considering how frequently the batteries die. Quiet on the set over here. You're crinkling and crunching your fancy little box. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it just seemed like way easier to use this door and then just plug it in like that. And you can swap out your batteries on the fly and you never have to adjust the positioning of your camera once you find the right angle. And then the last thing that I'll show is kind of the unique way that I found to attach the microphone adapter right here. And that is actually by the command hooks. So if you're familiar with command hooks, essentially what they are is they're super sticky. They have a high weight load or whatever you want to call it. So, you know, it sticks on there and it's not going to fly off on the highway, but it's super convenient because it has a little thing where you can pull on it and it'll just take this off once you're done with it. You may have seen these for like hanging things on the wall and then you can take it down without damaging the paint. And the idea there is if I ever want to sell this helmet or I'm not using this helmet for moto vlogging, then I can just easily take this off and it doesn't leave any residue. It doesn't mess up the paint, nothing like that. You can use just regular high strength Velcro if you want, but then once you're done or even double-sided tape, by the time that you're done, you got to take it off and you got to use Goo Gone and whatever. So this just seemed like the best, uh, best way to go. And it's never come off on the highway. I've done decent speeds with it, we'll say, and it stays on there nice and good. So that's the current setup that I'm running. I'll leave links for all of it below if you want to check it out. And then let's talk about what we're upgrading to. We upgraded and went with the GoPro Hero 11. Now, like I said, we've been using the 8. So from the 8 to the 11 is about three years difference between the two coming out. So we were well overdue for an upgrade. Although I gotta say, I only shoot in 4K 30 and both cameras are able to do that. So we didn't need to upgrade. You can definitely still moto vlog with a Hero 8 easily and still have great quality. But the main reason that I upgraded to the 11 is for battery life. I was just getting sick and tired of with the 8 having to swap out batteries every sometimes 45 minutes shooting in 4K. It's just a pain in the ass having to stop when you're on a trip with friends or something like that and be that guy that has to stop at a gas station to swap batteries. We've only been riding for not even an hour and my battery died. He still had like 32% left on his. So while these last about 45 minutes, although I'm sure it's old batteries also, but anyway, these only have been lasting 45 to 50 minutes and the new endurance batteries are said to last over an hour, I think like an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm really excited to see how that works out. So battery life was the main driving force behind finally upgrading to the 11 as well as the side door that it comes with here, or I should say the 11 doesn't come with it, but the kit that I got did come with it. It already has a GoPro brand door that has the opening just like the Alonzi door, but the bonus is that this one has like a rubber insert there. So it's actually weatherproof or maybe weather resistant, but either way, it just adds that layer of safety knowing that when you plug in the mic adapter, you have way more uh, resistance to water if you get caught in the rain than you do with this. There's still a chance that the rain could get into the mic adapter, but then you're only potentially ruining a $50 mic adapter versus ruining a $300, $400 camera. So that right there mixed with the battery life made it well worth it. It's less important to me, but also probably worth noting that the 11 also has the removable lens right there. So with the eight, if you hit a rock chip or something like that in the lens, you are just screwed. You know, the lens doesn't come off at all. But with the 11, you can actually screw the lens off. So if you get a rock chip on the front, you can take the lens off and replace the lens and not have to replace the entire camera. So yeah, personally, that's why I decided to upgrade to the 11 from the eight. And now we just got to put it on the helmet. Oh yeah. And as I'm getting ready to do this, I realized that I said I was going to come back to talking about why I use so many uh, little like adapter pieces here on the GoPro. Well, I guess it's only one, but you know what I mean? I don't attach the GoPro straight to the chin mount. And that's because it's designed to have this piece flipped upside down so that this mount would be down here. And then the GoPro just goes flat here. But I want the GoPro to be as high up and as close to my eyes as possible. So it feels like as close to actually what I'm seeing versus some moto vloggers when the camera's down here. And it feels like all you're seeing is their arms kind of like now using a chest mount. So I wanted to position mine as high up as possible. But in order to do that and still be able to close the helmet, I had to use this little adapter thing to bring the GoPro Pro out a bit so this little knob thing there can pass it and close and making sure that there's still room for me to open and close the vent right there. So you may not have to do that personally, but for me, I flipped this upside down and used that just so I can get the best angle possible. All right. So first things first, we just got to unscrew this to get the old camera off. Oh, and another side tangent that I do is if you look closely on the camera, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right there, there's like a little line where I cut it with my my knife a bit. And then right there on the mount, there's a little line. Hopefully you can see it where I cut it with my knife a bit. And I do that because once I find the perfect placement for the camera, I like to mark it. So that if I ever have to take the camera off and put it back on, I know exactly what angle I had it at before. All right. So comparing 
the two cameras, you can see the 11 is a bit bigger than the 8, but still not quite as big as the 8 when it's in the media mods, so not really concerned about that. And most of the size comes from the fact that the 11 has the front-facing camera. Obviously, we won't need to worry about that when we have it on the helmet, but if you're doing like a handheld vlog or something like that, it's definitely nice to have the front-facing screen. All right, so the 11, just like the 8, has these feet that flip down like that, and you just line it up and slide it into the mount and screw it in with one of the GoPro screws. Now we'll get the angle approximate to where we want it, which is just kind of looking straight ahead. You figure if you're riding, your eyes are going to be aiming in this direction, so you want the GoPro to face pretty much in the same direction. Make sure that there's no interference, not going to hit. That seems like the angle that we want, so we'll tighten it down decent, but of course once it's not raining and we can actually get on the bike, we'll actually test it out, and once we find the angle that we want, we'll lock it in place, and like I said, I take a knife and just kind of like scratch it, even with that line, so you can tell exactly where you want it. All right, so boom, easy enough. Now we'll set that aside and let's talk about the handheld setup that I've been using. So there's a lot going on here, but this overall is what I use for any of my handheld stuff, whether it be vlogging, install videos, etc. Anything that I'm not doing with my helmet is done with all of this right here. So for the longest time, I was using the GoPro Hero 8 right here with the media mod and the screen attachment. If I was doing a vlog where it was more than just me, like, you know, Nina and I were going somewhere and more than one person would be talking, I would just use the media mod microphone, but if it were something where it was just me, like an install video or something like that, I would use the wireless mic setup right here, which I'll talk about in a second. So for the Hero 8 with the media mod, it has the upgraded uh, microphone right here, and by upgraded, I mean it's just better than what's built into the Hero 8. It's not great by any means, but not terrible either. One of the main downsides is there's no wind dampening or whatever you want to call it. There's no, like, dead cat that goes over it to stop the wind. And then you have the uh, screen attachment right here, which is pretty nice because if it were turned on right now, when the screen is flipped up like this, you'd be able to see what the camera's seeing and you could flip it down like that and it would automatically flip back the right way so you can see what the camera's seeing in this direction, if that makes sense. So that's super nice, super convenient. It was nice and easy to just be, you know, walking around like, hey, what's up guys, blah, 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 typical vlogger stuff. But then it got to a point where I wanted to upgrade the quality of it a bit because at the end of the day, this is just a GoPro. So I ended up getting the new, or at the time it was new, iPhone 13 Pro, and that's what I started using for any of my install videos or handheld vlogging type deal. The quality of the iPhone was a lot better, but it was just a lot more inconvenient to use in comparison to the GoPro for a handful of reasons. And one of the main ones is that with the GoPro, it has replaceable battery. So as the battery dies, you just pop a new battery in. And if you want to, you can be charging the old battery in the meantime. With the iPhone, it only has one battery. Obviously, once it dies, you can't replace it. And if it dies, you know, you don't have a phone to use anymore. And with the iPhone, I would always use my wireless setup because the microphone I didn't find to be as good as the GoPro's microphone. But when you use the wireless microphone setup, which again, I'll talk about in a second, you have to plug it in here in order for the microphone to pick up, but then you take up your charging port. So if you're using the microphone, you can't be charging your phone at the same time. So it ends up dying. And I can't even begin to tell you the number of times that I was using my phone for an install video and we're three hours into the install and my phone dies. And now I don't have anything to record with. I'm not able to call anybody. If I have to go pick up a part or something, I don't have a phone to take with me if my car breaks down. So it's just not a good look to, you know, potentially be without a camera and a phone. So even though the quality was obviously much better with this versus the GoPro, I got to the point where I'm like, listen, it's just not worth the trade-off because it just makes my life way more miserable. So I'm not gonna be using this anymore for anything other than like cinematic type B-roll kind of like this. because it still handles that stuff way better than the GoPro does. But for any kind of handheld vlogging and things like that, install videos, etc., I'm definitely switching back to GoPro, and I'll show you which one I'm using in a second because it's on my chest right now. <laughs> so before I show you that, let's talk real quick about the wireless mic setup that I use because I love it. So this is the Rode Wireless Go microphone setup. It only costs like I think 200 bucks, but gives you high quality, like super high quality wireless mic capabilities. And I think it has like a 50 foot range or something like that. So how it works is this is either your microphone already because it has a microphone built in right there and it even has like a little wind uh wind sock whatever you want to call it dead cat that goes over this to block out the wind if you want and you can just clip this on your shirt and use that as a microphone or what i do is i take this microphone right here and you can plug it in right there clip the lapel mic to your shirt and then clip this part in your pocket so that nobody sees it and you get super high quality audio no matter where you go one two three four five six seven eight 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 22, 23. And for this microphone, this is actually a Purple Panda mic, which lots of moto vloggers I've heard use also, and I got it. I tested it out of my helmet. Did not like the quality as far as helmet stuff goes, but I love it for lapel stuff. So this is what you put on yourself for the audio portion, and then this side goes either on the cold shoe mount of your GoPro right there, or goes on the cold shoe mount of the uh, iPhone holder that I found right here and just slips in the top, which by the way, if you are using an iPhone, this little holder is a godsend. So I'll link that in the description as well. Has a place for your tripod to go. I have mine with a little tripod GoPro setup so I can change the angle. You can put any iPhone you want in there. It has mounts there, all kinds of cool stuff. Super nice. But yeah, so this is the receiver portion of the microphone. And in order to attach it to your phone, you just got to plug that bad boy in like so, and then plug the other end into your phone right there and you're good to go. Now your iPhone is picking up wireless signal from that microphone. Of course, like I said, there are downsides to using your iPhone like this. And one of them is the fact that this takes up the charging port so you can't be charging your phone. But the other downside is that you can't play the video back on your phone and hear it unless you unplug it. So if you're filming something and you wanna know if you got a good take, you gotta go over to your iPhone, unplug this, hope it doesn't change the angle of the iPhone as you unplug it, watch it, and then remember to plug this in or else your audio is screwed. And believe me, in the heat of the moment when you're doing an install video, it's very easy to forget to plug this back in. So that's how you set it up to your iPhone, and that's the cable that you use right there. Both of these red cables come with the Rode Wireless Go. This one that is the black end, and then the gray end is what you use for your iPhone, straight into the Apple dongle for like the headphone to lightning adapter thing. But if you're plugging into anything other than your iPhone, you use the one with the two black ends here. And in that case, what you would do is you would plug one end into the receiver like so, attach the thing to your GoPro, and then plug it in just like that. Now the good part about this is that if I were recording something and I wanted to see how it turned out, I can go into my GoPro and I can re-watch whatever it was without having to unplug this and you'll still get the audio coming out. Or you could even check on your phone through the GoPro app, check the footage that way and you never have to unplug your mic so you know that it's always working. Which is another reason why, like I said, I decided to switch back to a GoPro for filming any of my vlog stuff. So perfect segue, let me show you the new GoPro vlog setup that I got. Say hello to the new and improved GoPro vlogging setup. As you can see, this thing is way gnarlier, way more professional looking than the old GoPro setup. And this is the GoPro Hero 9. So even though it's only the 9 and I was using the 8 before, it's only a one, you know, generation difference. This one is way, way better than the Hero 8 for what I need. And the reason why the 9 is so much better than the 8 for what I need is because the 9 is the first generation that had the front facing screen built into the camera. So instead of having to have this extra screen that attaches to the media, mod and flips around and you got to charge it separately. You just have a screen built in right there and you have one less thing to charge, one less thing to attach to the media mod. And I'll show you right now actually when you turn the camera on. Even though the screen is so small, it's super easy to read. You can see what you have in frame, what you don't have in frame. It looks like I'm wearing a bra right now with my chest mount, but let's ignore that. And yeah, it's just super freaking convenient because you can frame the shot and you don't have to have anything additional mounted onto it. All right, let's turn that back off so you stop seeing how crazy I look with this chest mount slash bra on. Now the other advantage to this camera is just this entire setup that you see here. At first glance, it just looks like the same media mod that the 8 had, but this has way more going on. For starters, you can see that this media mod actually has a wind cover on it stock from GoPro, so you get less wind noise. And not only does it have that, how do I do it? The wind cover actually pops off, so if you don't wanna use it for whatever reason, you don't have to. And then you can see that this one has a way better microphone that has the front facing one, a bunch of ones on the side, and then an even bigger and better rear facing microphone. And not only that, but with the nine, you can choose whether or not you want it to pick the microphone for you, or whether you want it just the front mic, just the rear mic. So it has a lot of different customizations to make the audio better. And I'm really interested to see even just how this audio right now is sounding compared to the rest of the video because we've been using the upgraded microphone on the nine and now we switch back to the eight. Now also on this media mod, you'll see that it has all the same plugins on the back as far as I think it's like the mini HDMI or whatever, the USB-C and the microphone jack. But with the nine, they all have these weatherproof uh, doors that go over it right there. On the eight, none of these have covers. 
features. Now I bought this as what they call the, I think, creator kit or something like that. So that included the media mod. It also came with this light right here, which you can take the cover off. This cover diffuses the light, so it's kind of like a softer light. Let's see if we can show it. So yeah, it's more of a soft light with that. And then once you take it off, it's more of a brighter hard light. That's freaking blinding me. It has different brightnesses that you can set it to. For some reason, it has a flash setting. I have no idea why. And it charges separately, so you don't have to plug it into the camera and drain any of the camera's battery. And of course, it's just a cold shoe mount right there, so you can slide it on and off however you want. Now, speaking of charging, this handle also came with a creator kit, and it's super awesome because this handle actually charges your GoPro for you. So you can open the back door, plug it in like that, and then you can see the lights come on, and it is charging your GoPro for you. So you can charge this handle separately from the camera, and allegedly between the endurance battery that goes in the 9 mixed with the battery that's in the handle, apparently you can get like four hours of filming out of it before having to swap out a battery. Also, this handle has a bunch of other cool features where you can use it to turn the camera on and off just like so. You can use this button to make it start or stop recording. And it even has a button where you can check the charge on it. You can do stuff with Bluetooth. So it's a super huge bonus that you can pretty much control the camera through this handle. You can be holding the camera out and still operating it with your hand. And then you can also see on the bottom, it has a thread so you can put it on a tripod. It's just a standard tripod mount. But even if you don't wanna put it on like a big legit tripod, it has built in mini tripod legs right there. So you can set it up wherever you want to film. And then it even has has a little thing right here where these feet flip out and these are just extra like GoPro feet so you can put additional attachments on here if you want. And then the last cool feature is that this thing actually pivots so you can take the camera and turn it however you want to make the handle more comfortable for you or you know if you're using the tripod and you want it to face a different direction it swivels a full 360 so you can get whatever view you want. And this full creator setup or whatever it's called with the handle and the media mod and everything works with the Hero 9, 10, and 11 so for some reason this camera breaks, I can just take the 11 and swap it in here and still have a moto vlog setup. Or I should say vlog setup, handheld setup, you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm super excited about this, super stoked to start testing it out. And even though the quality might not be quite as good as the iPhone, I feel like just the convenience and ease of it will make everything way, way worth it. So there you have it, my new moto vlog setup for 2023, which I personally believe is the best moto vlog setup you can get right now. You of course have the new GoPro Hero 11 attached to my helmet with the chinmounts.com chin mount. You have the GoPro brand mic adapter running out into a giant squid microphone. You got the microphone ran back, tucked into my cheek pad, nice and secure. Then you have the Rode Wireless Go mic setup right there, running out to a Purple Panda microphone. My iPhone 13 Pro for any kind of fancy cinematic B-roll. And of course, the GoPro Hero 9 with the creator kit that I'm filming this on right now. Huge shout out and moment of silence to my GoPro Hero 8 for all of the trusty work that it's done over the past couple years. 95% of everything on my channel has been filmed with this thing and it has been an absolute trooper. And now it's off to its new home with Jesse Clark, one of my Patreon members who actually won this because I did a giveaway on my Patreon, and he's getting a little piece of Life of Birch history faux free. This channel would not be possible without Patreon. Seriously, I could not be doing this without them, especially when the weather's crappy like this and I can't get out and film. So it only felt right to send a little piece of Life of Birch history to one of the Patreon members, so congrats, Jesse, and thank you to all of the Patreon members for your continued support. Seriously, I know I've already said this, but I could not be doing this without you. And if you want to support the channel also through these tough winter times, make sure to check out Patreon com slash life of birch it is the biggest and best way that you can help the channel but if you're not able to do that of course i understand times are tough for all of us so you can also go ahead and like comment and subscribe to support the channel and other than that we'll catch you in the next one love you guys peace